Good afternoon, everybody. It's Josh Parry here again from Cyrus. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here, joining you once again for another one of our Friday webinars. Uh, as I always say, we're having a great time coming to you every week live on a Friday to talk about what's new in the industry and what's new with the technology. We have a really exciting uh, little show for you guys today to talk about something that's been a long, long time coming, which is our new Task Manager software. Uh, Task Manager, as you're going to see on today's session, is a, a really, really cool new leg of the Cyrus software. This is more than just an update. This is an entire new wing, essentially, of your vacation rental software that's going to be included for you upon launch as a Cyrus customer. We're going to dig deep and talk quite a lot about the new software today and give you guys a deep dive. But before we do that, as always, it's my utmost pleasure to be joined by my friend and colleague, VP of Product at Cyrus, Brian Hamawi. Welcome, Brian. Hey, hey, Josh. Hey, uh, Cyrus folks. Really excited to be here today. I think uh, you know there's a lot of really good news coming out of the industry, uh, exciting stuff coming out of Cyrus as well. So overall, uh, again, it's Friday. So I'm looking forward to, to a happy Friday, some new releases, some, some good conversations. Um, so let's get started. I'm remiss in not saying happy Friday. <laughs> so happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> and you know what? Um, I'd also be remiss in not saying uh, today, of all Fridays, is a very happy Friday for many of us in the vacation rental industry. Uh, I know we have property management companies on the webinar today joining us from all around the world. Um, but especially where we're based here in the central Florida area uh, and the statewide as a whole, uh, we've been working really closely with just about all of you guys on optimizing software use throughout this period of uncertainty for the local industry, uh, especially under the state mandate of, uh, of no vacation rentals. And um, congratulations to all of you, because as a result of the, you know, the tenacity of this industry and the impact that this industry brings to the state, the professionalism with which you guys operate and the professionalism, the professionalism with which you all operated and communicated with the state uh, to get this done the right way, especially alongside the Vacation Rental Management Association. I think we proved as an industry that um, Central Florida is doing big, big, big things. Florida as a whole, I know the Panhandle had an awesome reopening earlier this week. Um, I'm just very, very proud to be located where we are and working so closely with the folks in our uh, statewide industry here in Florida, obviously around the world as well. But um, I don't think many vacation rental markets globally were impacted quite as heavily as Florida was. So to see news this week of the reopening is, uh, is absolutely thrilling. I know we're not out of the woods yet. Um, this is really where the hard work begins. This is where we get to take all of the investment that you guys have made in your businesses over the last few weeks of getting set up to prepare for this bounce back. This is where that now comes to fruition and where you really have to execute. So if you haven't reached out to us yet and spoken to us about the kind of things you can be doing within your business today using the software to prepare for the bounce back and come back better and stronger than you were before this, uh, we'd love to speak with you. Um, and then Brian, I'll throw to you briefly as well to kind of talk about what your team's doing on the managed distribution side. Um, I know we've yeah. had a ton of activity from customers joining that program to capitalize on the post-pandemic response. So um, I don't want to belabor the point too much and, and, and get too deep on today's webinar about the reopening because uh, there's a lot of progress and a lot of uh, information yet to process. But I did just want to call that out at the top of the webinar and just congratulate the local industry here for uh, you know achieving what you've done, um, getting things reopened and um, getting set up for a successful, hopefully, next couple of weeks. Brian, can you, uh, you feel free to, to add to that before we get started? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to echo a lot of the same stuff that you just said. Uh, I think we, we've been working really close with Florida Verma. I think Dennis Hanks over there has done an incredibly awesome job of, you know, talking to all of the, the different counties, uh, working with the state uh, and just, you know, powering through and, and trying to get us open as fast as possible. It, it's been a complicated process. And uh, as the Cyrus have been, we've been involved with uh, a lot of the process. We've been talking to a lot of the big counties as well, uh, trying to assist and, and see how we can get you guys open uh, as quickly as possible. But in addition to that, we took internal, we took a look internally and uh, we said, okay, how do we start to assist our property managers uh, and what tools can we start to, to provide them? in order to be able to provide the, the things that our guests are needing and some of the requirements that the states are putting in and then on the county level, what the requirements are, you know, how do we provide technology and support for you guys to be able to achieve those things? 
in the least painful way. So, I mean, like Josh said, uh, from, from, you know, from your standpoint, if you feel your operations are doing well and you guys are in a good position to operate and you've got, you know, you're following the guidelines, um, by all means, uh, we wish you all the best of success and we support you guys. If you guys aren't 100% sure that you've got the right things in place, reach out to us. We've got a lot of uh, different resources that we've put together, uh, including Love Rentals, which is our managed distribution section, uh, headed up by Jared uh, Jared P. And uh, his team over there, Lorelai, we have seen an enormous surge in reservations over the last uh, week and a half. It's been insane. Our team is working around the clock uh, over time. A lot of them are very exhausted. But reservations are just coming in by the numbers. So if yeah. you guys are, uh, if you need help marketing, if you need help setting up your, your, you know, your, your messaging templates, your email templates, uh, reach out to our team. Uh, we're happy to talk to you guys. But, uh, today is all about task manager. And I'm, uh, beyond excited about this topic. Uh, a, a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is, you know, preparedness for your guests, your guests arrival and technology that we're putting together and why we put this technology together internally. So Josh, tell us about Ask Manager. Tell us why we're here today. Tell us about the actual value proposition of the software and what the goals are uh, bringing this to market in, you know, in, in an epidemic like this. Yeah, and there's, there's a, a few different ways to slice the question. So bear with me while we kind of navigate because there's a lot that goes into this program and the reason why we're launching it now, obviously, yeah. So let me set the table a little bit. About, oh, it must have been almost a year ago now, um, we started looking really closely at the kind of feedback that we were getting on the direction of the platform. And I think from 2017 to 2019, we focused really, really heavily on the distribution side of the platform, um, which is, you know, the most direct way we can help folks on the platform increase their revenue earning potential is, you know, what are the different channels that we connect to and the different tools that we give you to be successful on those channels. So we did a ton of, of channel management integrations. You know, we achieved an elite partnership for you guys with the Verbo Home Away. We achieved preferred partnership for you guys with Airbnb. Um, just uh, the last couple of weeks, we've wrapped up our direct connection to booking.com and we'll be announcing the launch date for that as we go into June. So, you know, we, we put a very heavy focus on getting you guys connected to the OTAs and looking at the direct revenue generating side of the business. Um, but a lot of the feedback that we began to get, rightfully so, was I've still got to still going to manage my properties guys i'm still you know on site and we've got this service logon feature which is fine but it's it's getting dated so um you know let's put some focus on that side of the business don't don't leave us behind in that area and we were touched by that feedback and and started doing a, a deep dive into you know what is the most contemporary way for folks like you guys in our industry to interact with your housekeeping staff maintenance staff inspection staff the folks who have their boots on the ground in the property, make sure that those things get executed extremely well. Because at the end of the day, the product, which is the vacation rental home, being in good condition and setting a good first impression with the guest, that's your brand. When guests arrive into a vacation rental home and things are misplaced or it's untidy or several spots around the house are missed during housekeeping, that's your brand. Your brand is not spotless when something like that happens. So we started looking at how technology can back up um, the ways that you guys as management companies ensure that the home, the product you deliver to the guest is of quality. That trickles down into the owner experience, it trickles into the guest experience, it, it trickles into all different facets of the business kind of root from the boots on the ground operation. So kind of some high level value propositions of the system, which I'll, I'll dig into in a second, but what really changed things um, around February, March time was when we began to see the effect of, of the pandemic on the industry and it became very clear and our suspicions were confirmed as places started to reopen that the cleanliness of the home was going to become a sticking point in the reopening process for the industry uh, so at that point it became where do we draw the line here and go to market with this new product so that we can help you guys get accomplished what you need to in the reopening without releasing something that's incomplete so what we've produced is what we call 
uh, it's, it's the best viable product for the moment. So we've taken Task Manager, this beastly project, um, and our development team's done an absolutely wonderful job getting it to this point. Um, basically, we have a phase one product that we're going to be working on expanding over the next several months into a phase two product. But as you're going to see today, phase one is just immensely, immensely impressive. Um, it's, you can stack it up against any third party housekeeping and maintenance software in the industry that stands alone. There are platforms out there that folks pay what they pay to Cyrus just for the housekeeping and maintenance portion. That's now going to live inside the platform. So we're looking at ways not just to increase operational efficiency, but to make sure that you guys are focusing your spending on, on all-in-one products that make the most sense for your business. So you'll see that today. That's kind of the genesis of the product, how we ended up where we're at today. Um, and before I throw it back to you, Brian, because I'm, I'm going on a little bit here, I just wanted to read off, because uh, it's easier for me to read it off. I just got five very succinct bullet points that encapsulate the goal of the task manager and what you're going to see today. Um, so goal number one out of five, we want to increase your operational efficiency by reducing the manual exchange of information between property managers and on-site workers. So automation, essentially. Um, we can Number two, increase the overall quality and efficiency of the housekeeping and on-site jobs due to fixed expectations, things like reference photos, uh, central documentation of procedures. You'll often hear the term SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Task Manager is going to help you with that. Point number three that we're going to get into um, is an obvious one, maximizing guest satisfaction with better uh, housekeeping results. Like I said, that impression the guest gets of the home when they first step in um, and, and they see it and they have that moment, wow, this is my vacation home. Um, it being clean and presentable and pristine is your brand. So that's incredibly important. Um, point number four out of five, uh, we're going to decrease manual entry by, by allowing you guys to actually create follow-up tasks based off of information that comes from the on-site staff. Uh, we call those issue reports. So when you get an issue report back from uh, a cleaner in the software, you can easily flip that into a follow-up work order or a follow-up clean or a follow-up inspection rooted to that issue report, which is a huge time saver. Number five, Brian, I'm going to ask you to tell, uh, talk to our audience a little bit more about why this is so important today. But number five is reducing the management company's liability. Um, what we want to do is provide a paper trail with evidence and documentation that you guys followed certain cleaning procedures and sanitary procedures with photographic evidence of that um, when there is risk that guests can get ill on vacation. Could you speak a little bit, Brian, to kind of the landscape today and why these software tools, especially with a focus on number five, are right for the moment? I do, but I want to take a quick step back, Josh. Um, yeah. So there was one thing that you mentioned, which I think I just want to make sure it's super, super clear for our users is the cost of the actual software. Um, so you mentioned that uh, you know a lot of a lot of users are paying for the software. You know the equivalent of Task Manager, um, the costing basically costs the same as Cyrus. What is it actually going to cost our managers for them to use Task Manager if they if they opt in to use it? Great question. You guys are Cyrus customers and task manager is a cyrus feature so as a cyrus customer you get your cyrus features so there is no additional cost for task manager upon launch um, so we're absolutely thrilled to bring that pri uh, privilege to you guys of um, a, a absolutely robust housekeeping and maintenance operational toolkit at no additional cost so i'm um, glad you asked brian that's a very important point I don't want you guys to it go is. through this webinar and look at the feature and think, gosh, if I could afford it, that would be great. But um, this is um, this is something for everybody on the Cyrus platform. Uh, thank you for, for clarifying that, Brian. And it's really important because you guys have to understand that the, the cost of using the software is exponential now. You don't have to go to a 30, third party to be able to use this, but this is going to save you guys an enormous amount of money if you use it the right way between you and your staff. Uh, not just you know being able to monitor what they're doing, but just from from an automation perspective. So to answer Josh's question, um, you know one of the biggest issues that we've always had in the industry is being able to report issues, to be able to uh, log those issues, and then present those issues in a timely manner, uh, in, whether it's in a document or half proof of items that guests have done inside of your home. Task Manager's aim is to help you guys through a lot of this process. If you know if you're working with companies like Verbo or you're working with companies like Airbnb, 
and they start to ask you for um, proof that the guest actually did some of the damages that you're reporting inside of the house or you had some issue at the house and it was resolved within a certain amount of time, we are producing that tool for you guys to be able to provide that kind of data to all our partners. Uh, it's a safekeeper for you. Um, it's also, you know, in a roundabout way, it'll help you get to know your guests. And what I mean by that is a tool like this in the future. So if you end up having repeat guests um, and you had an issue with one of your guests, this is the type of tool that will give you some insight into the behavior of the guest in the past. Um, and a lot of property managers realize that, you know, if bad things happen at the house, they'll recognize the name, they'll do some researching, and then they'll be like, okay, let's see, should we book this guest again, accept them in his house, yes or no? But this will actually allow, to, it'll actually give you the insights into what happened within that reservation, and then your team as well. Because as you guys grow, you guys aren't going to always be doing reservations, so you need to be able to expand the information that you have within your company to all of your staff members. This will do it for you. The last piece is that, that I think, Josh, you know, you touched on it a little bit, but this is the only tool that I know in the industry that isn't, you know, as far as third, if it was a third party, we aren't a standalone product. This is integrated with your software. This is incredibly important um, because we're not saying that you guys are going to have to manage multiple tools in order to achieve one task. This means that this tool is built within your software and it'll talk to the software. So in, in, in an ecosystem, you want all your tools to talk to each other and give you the information that you need. That's when this tool becomes powerful. It's a powerful okay. independent tool, but it's an even more powerful tool if it actually talks with your software. Uh, and that's where this becomes really exciting. Uh, yeah. Eventually, you'll see releases of new features uh, between uh, some of the, some of the other pieces of the software and Task Manager that are just going to give you some incredible power for you and for your teams. So yeah. I hope that answers your question, Josh. No, it, it answers it really, really well. And I just want to let you guys know we're having kind of an open conversation here. In a, in a couple of minutes, we're going to do a, a deep dive demo of the platform. But there's a few points I want to expand on, on what you just said, Brian, which is um, a practical kind of step-by-step -step example of what you just said which is the, the deep integration of the product um, with task manager being built into the cyrus platform if we flesh that out what that means is that um, you have very unique homes some of you have more resort style properties which have very similar requirements throughout others of you do have unique door-to-door -door inventory so what that means is you have a specific set of you know custom checklists and requirements for that home when that home gets booked it automatically schedules the departure clean and the departure inspection using the, um, the the best fit cleaner and the best fit inspector for those homes. It automatically hits the calendar. Um, it automatically hits the cleaning schedule uh, seamlessly. And then what that means is once it's pending in progress or complete and things are being answered against the clean, that's updating the reservation. Uh, when it's time to pay the cleaners, the clean cost that lives in the software is attached to the clean. When it's time to charge the guest or charge the owner for the clean, that's all linked through to the owner statement through the payout. Um, you don't get that benefit if you're not using a cleaning product that is, a, or, or a task manager product that's built into your software. There's a huge disconnect there, and that's going to add not just the financial cost of using third-party products, but also the opportunity cost of the time spent chasing and reconciling manual details between systems. So I'm really glad that you touched on that, Brian, before we move ahead. Yeah. It's probably one of the most important factors uh, of software period, and it, it's specific to Task Manager today, but across the board, when you guys look at different softwares, and if it is a third party, you need to really take into consideration, okay, does this solve my issue, and how much interaction does it have for my software? Because in a lot of instances, it actually can create some issues uh, because it's not as fluid. So, uh, cool. Let's uh, Let's let's talk a little bit about task manager and some of the differences about how it it's different from some of the housekeeping uh and operation software that we currently have in cyrus can you give us like a little bit of a breakdown of what task manager is and how it breaks down compared to the tools that we have absolutely so um and this is kind of the last um table set that we'll do before we dig into the software because i'm all about context um, i want to make sure that we have a nice table set so that we can go into the demo 
with the most amount of context possible. Um, the reason why we do that is because you guys know we have an existing housekeeping and maintenance toolkit in the software. It's called Service Logon. Many of you guys have been using that for a long time. Um, this isn't going to be an immediate replacement for Service Logon because we don't believe in just switching something off and moving somewhere else. Um, so Service Logon is still going to be available, but we're going to be strongly encouraging you guys to move off of Service Logon and onto Task Manager as it suits your operation. Uh, so we're going to give you guys a ton of training materials and documentation and video walkthroughs uh, and all the help that you need to migrate off of Service Logon and onto Task Manager. Um, so the last thing we'll just do before we do the deep dive is just explain some of the key differences out loud so that you understand that as we go through. Um, so the first thing uh, that's massively different is the way that the tasks are configured. What we've developed is a template-based system. So if you think about kind of how rates work in Cyrus, you have rate sets, right? And you can assign a rate set to a single home and have a different rate set for every home. Or you may have one rate set that applies to 15 or 20 homes because they're similar and therefore they have the same rate structure. The task templates work in almost exactly the same way. So you can build out um, unique or broad-based um, checklists and custom requirements for each home and have that checklist automatically assigned to every departure clean that goes on that home. Uh, so it inherits that unique checklist and, and custom nuance that you build in on a home by home basis. So you don't have to go to each clean and manually fill out the instructions before you deploy the housekeeper. That's a game changer. Uh, the next big difference is the app. Um, service logon uh, is, is very serviceable, but task manager, um, we've, we've really developed our in-house team for uh, user interface and user experience here at Cyrus. Uh, as you can tell with the Cyrus One product, the online version of Cyrus that, that was released last year, uh, we're really um, keenly paying attention to feedback that we've gathered over the years about our user interfaces. Uh, and the Task Manager app user interface for mobile uh, use in the field uh, it is really, really progressive. Uh, it's, it's a great intuitive interface, and that makes a big difference. Um, using that app, which we're going to show you in just a few minutes, the staff have the ability to upload pictures, add notes, um, you know, it's integrated with their phone's default GPS app so they can locate the home easily, um, report their issues from the field. Um, and to boot, it's multilingual. So it works in English, Spanish, Portuguese natively. They're all directly um, uh, professionally translated. There's no, you know, the only thing that will be automatically translated is when you guys type notes in English um, and you type them free type. Of course, we don't have a professional who's reading and transcribing those, but um, everything else that's um, interface based is, is um, natively translated for your diverse staff. Um, and then the last really cool thing that's different about that app is that it has cached offline support, which means that if, if, if you out in the field happen to lose signal uh, while on a job, you're not going to lose your work. It caches it locally and uploads it when a connection is reestablished. So um, lots of really cool stuff with the app. Uh, and then the last big thing that we touched on uh, before we dive into the product itself uh, that's different now with Task Manager is what we call uh, follow-up tasks. So when somebody in the field reports an issue, say, hey, there's a, a massive soda stain in the carpet in the master bedroom by the nightstand, uh, you get that alert in Cyrus, and you can flip that into a uh, follow-up clean, a deep clean, a maintenance, a work order, an inspection, or what have you. So kind of nested tasks within tasks um, uh, is, is a big change. So um, with, with all that ado, Brian, uh, what say you? Should we, uh, should we kick off the well, demo? This, this is, uh, I think everybody's waiting to see what this thing is uh, going to do for us. Go All ahead. right. Brilliant. So let's dive in. I'm going to share my screen here and you all should see a pop up. Are we on, Brian? Yeah, we are. All right. Wonderful. So uh, just so you know what you're looking at here in the left side of the screen is the online Cyrus user interface. Um, this is at portal.cyrus.com. Uh, many of you guys know that uh, we have uh, the installable uh, Windows-based Cyrus product and the online-based product. Um, I've mentioned this a few times, so I won't go too in-depth, but uh, the Cyrus One product online is a direct mirror of what you have in the legacy Windows application. So one for one, like for like, uh, it's just in an online browser-based environment, which is fully mobile-friendly. So I uh, highly recommend if you haven't uh, taken a, a dive into Cyrus One yet, when we launch the resources page after this webinar with the recording of this webinar, uh, you'll have a link to a full walkthrough video of how to access Cyrus One. 
and um, everything is just seamlessly mirrored over from the Windows version. So there's no migration, there's no retraining required. Uh, you'll just find that the menu is on the left instead of on the top. That's the major difference. Uh, Task Manager today at launch is exclusive to the online Cyrus One portal, which again is absolutely free for you guys. So there's no upgrade or anything you have to do. I'm just telling you this because you won't currently find Task Manager once it launches in the legacy Windows edition. So that's here on the left. And then here on the right, in this uh, cell phone sized screen, uh, I can't show you guys my uh, my cell phone on the webinar. So I have a, a little cell phone sized version of the app that we're gonna use for this demo. All right. So to set the table, before we dive into the actual app, which I think is what a lot of people are most excited about, I wanna show you the template system because that's, um, in my opinion, one of the coolest parts of the new program. Um, so under the task templates area of the software, which is in your, in your management company tools, uh, you'll see that you can create four different types of task manager templates. So we have housekeeping, we have inspections, we have standard work orders, and we have advanced work orders. On this session, I'm not gonna break down kind of the difference between work orders and advanced. We have some great documentation we'll be sharing with you guys um, about that, but to keep this uh, as straightforward as possible, we're gonna be focusing just about all of our examples today on housekeeping, because that's kind of the main day-to-day -to -day topic um, that uh, we get the most questions about. And then the documentation and things like that you'll see reflected uh, is, is, is gonna give you more of a deep dive on the maintenance and the inspections and things like that. Um, so as I mentioned a few minutes ago, these templates are basically the, the best way to kind of visualize what this template does is think about the rate structure in Cyrus. So you may have a cleaning template for every um, you know bedroom type. You may have a six bedroom cleaning template. You may have a three bedroom cleaning template, or you may have one for every home, and that's fine. Um, it's just you know it comes down to how nuanced you want to be. Um, long story short, Task Manager, we generally encourage you to be as granular as possible. It may take you a little bit longer to set up, but if you start by being granular and you create a unique uh, circumstance for every home, what that's basically going to allow you to do is have as detailed as possible an audit track for every home. Because even if you have similar homes, which are on, I'm going to turn off my IMs here so you guys aren't getting all of my stuff. <laughs> um, what you have is basically the ability to track, you know, you have a different nightstand in a living room in one six bedroom home versus a different nightstand layout in the living room in a different six bedroom home. You want that nuance accounted for. So basically create as many different templates as you like to accomplish those different This is a, this is a really cool tool, guys. It, it, it shows that we've thought through a little bit on how you can use it on a, on a single unit, but you can use it to scale as well. So if you do operate and you've got 30 units that are in exactly the same building and have the exact same features, you can apply that exact tool for across the board and your onboarding process is really fast. So it's a very flexible tool. It's something that we're thinking about thoroughly throughout Cyrus and, and how we develop future project projects as well. Exactly. You'll see that with you know, Brian, you've been working hard <laughs> on, on some, some, some secret projects that we're looking forward to releasing, but everything from rates to all the new things that we're doing, the template based structure allows you guys to be as broad or as granular as you like and set you up for success. So you'll see that reflected in task manager. What we're going to do just to keep this example simple um, is focus on just a template that we have here called standard departure clean. Um, so you can just pretend that this is for a specific unit, but it may be for 10 of the same identical unit. You know, that doesn't really matter for the sake of the demo. The way that task manager breaks out is into different sections. So you may have uh, for a standard clean, you may have a section for every room. So you see here I have back porch, master bedroom, living room, bathroom, kitchen. So we're going to expand each of these sections in just a moment and talk about how those work. Um, I'll just use one quick example, which is master bedroom. So this is where I build out the requirements and the uh, requests that we have for the housekeeper when they go into the master bedroom. A request can be really anything that you like, and there are several different types of request. Um, so before we get into examples, I'll just kind of show you, um, let's go ahead and add a new request to the master bedroom. And you'll see here, there are seven, seven different types of requests that you can ask. You can, you can give a checklist, so for example, here I have a checklist item up here, which is sweep under the bed, the dresses and the nightstands, check under the furniture for missing guest articles. That's a checklist. Uh, or you can have a photo requirement. For example, we have up here, add a photo of the room as you found it. That's gonna prompt the housekeeper on staff to upload a photo before they can move on. Uh, count, 
A good example of that is open the closet and make sure before you leave, there are five clean towels. Uh, text entry, you're just asking them an open-ended question and they have to write a response to that question. Uh, yes or no. An example of that would be, um, do you feel satisfied that this guest took care of the home and should we pull the security deposit or should we charge them a damage fee? Uh, that's a good example of a yes or no question for a new requirement. Rating, I have an example up here, which is rate the condition of the room as it was left in by the guests. And then a condition report is usually for a specific item. So you might say um, in the kitchen, um, rate the cleanliness uh, of, of or, or excuse me, that's a condition report for an item. So you'll say, what's the condition of the toaster oven? Um, and that's usually graded. I believe it's from uh, working, not working, broken. Um, there's a few different set statuses that you can select for a condition report. So those are the seven different types of questions that you can ask the cleaning staff to satisfy from the app. Um, and what we've built here is in the master bedroom, we've got a, um, you can make this anything you like. This is just a, a generalized example, but we're asking for a photo of the room as it was found, a checklist for, for sweeping and clearing under the bed, rate the condition of the room as it was left in, and then take a photo of the room at the end once you've left. What's really cool about these different requests is you can actually upload a reference photo. So where we have, we're asking them to add a photo of the room as they left it. When you hit upload reference photo, you're gonna be able to upload how you want the room to look or how you want that item or request to look so that the cleaner can actually look at that in the app and then replicate it. And then when they upload that picture, you guys are gonna get the report and you can say, yeah, I'm satisfied that what the, the, uh, what the cleaner did in here is to my specifications. That's um, so that's awesome, Josh, true. because I mean, it takes the guessing game out of everything. It also eliminates, you know, some of our cleaners love to go off and, and try to do prettier things, but it, you know, and then your guests walk in and they're like, what the heck is this? And it's not really up to your standards or the look and feel of your company. So this is really about, it, it does take a little bit of time to set up, you know, what those photos look like. But at the end of the day, the amount of time and the consistency it brings to your company is, is phenomenal long term. Amen. Um, another cool thing about templates before we move on is that um, you can add, like when we have master bedroom, for example, you can add uh, requirements directly to the room like we have here. You'll see these requirements are all on the room, um, but within a room, you can add items. So I'm going to add an item here for master room king bed, for example, right? I can add the king bed to the master bedroom. And you'll see here under the master bedroom drop down, I have a section for sanitary measures. We'll come back to that. But beneath that, I have another section within master bedroom for that king bed. So I can go and say, I'd like to have you upload a photo, which is arrange the towels ornately at the foot of the bed. And we're gonna provide a reference photo for that so that you can see what I mean and hit save. That photo request is now attached to the master bedroom king bed. Alternatively, you could maybe do a checklist instead. So you can say, all right, so step number one is, you know, fold the duvet in X, Y, Z way. Step number two, arrange the pillows, so and so. You get my point. And I'm just using one very specific example with the master bedroom king's, uh, king bed, but this could be, you know, uh, the way that the cutlery is arranged in the kitchen or the way that the remotes should be arranged in the living room. You get my point. So you have do sections, they, do they have, rooms, and cascades from that. Do they have a limit of a uh, number of unit or number of line items that they can add to each one of those topics or it's unlimited? Totally open-ended. Like I said a few minutes ago, you can be as granular as you like. And, um, you know, I, I don't want people to look at a system like this and say, wow, I, I have to list every single step that I want done in a clean. We like things to be easy for you guys, but realistically, if housekeeping is something that you take seriously as an asset to your brand, especially in light of the new sanitary requirements, yes, I think it's important for property management companies to be looking at a standard procedure, item for item within each home. So uh, we're giving you free reign to be as granular as you like. Now, if you don't have um, you know, necessarily uh, the, the, the bandwidth or if you, you know, aren't looking to dive in head first to this just yet, you absolutely can go in and make a broader template, a much more general template for the homes to start off with. But ultimately, we strongly, strongly recommend being granular with these. That way, the cleaner is filling things out to a T and you have a very specific paper activity trail of what was done in that home. It's a good question, Brian. 
Um, I just want to, before we move on, I want to actually address the sanitary measures because there's a couple of different ways that you can have sanitary measures accomplished for uh, in the application. What I've done here is provided an outline of how they both work. So option one is for the general job as a whole, have a section where you set the table for the sanitary requirements across the whole clean. For example, the first section that the cleaner has to answer is called sanitary measures. And I've set this, th these aren't recommendations from Cyrus. These are just some examples that I found uh, by looking at the Verbo recommendations and the Verma recommendations. But for example, before they begin cleaning the individual rooms, you're gonna have, um, for example, upload a photo of yourself wearing personal protective equipment. So, you know, they snap a photo in the mask and the gloves and the eyewear so that you have proof, hey, my cleaner is using PPE on site. And then for it, broadly for the whole job, um, spray and wipe all flat surfaces in a checklist. You know, do the tables, the nightstands, the desks, the dresses. Same thing for the doorknobs. Same thing for the other high touch items in the home like soap dispensers, utensils, electronics, and remotes. Um, so think broadly about the whole home and put the entire sanitary cascade into this one drop down um, on kind of before they get into the rooms. Option two is within the room, if you want to be super granular, which again is usually the best thing to do, although it might take a bit longer, you can have a separate sanitary measures section within each room. So specific to the master bedroom, you know, we've got sanitize the doorknobs, the bed frame, the nightstand, the vanity. These are all very specific to the individual room. Uh, same thing, you know, linens, do the hand sanitizer station and that kind of thing, specific within the room. You could do one or the other, you could do both. But what we've actually provided upon launch with Task Manager are some sample templates that you can use as, as an influence for setting those things up in the way that you want them. Um, and there are a few different ways you can accomplish it, as you can tell. Uh, but we've got very specific instructions on how to set these things up. Um, I don't want to belabor it or confuse you at this stage. I really just want you to prove the point that you can be as broad or as granular with you like and satisfy the requirements from your individual jurisdiction when it comes to how they need things cleaned. Do you have any follow-up on that, Brian? No, I think you're doing a great job so far. There's so many details in this uh, program, and I think you know it's uh, you can make it as complicated or as easy as you guys want, um, but this is just it, it's such a cool tool. Bear in mind, what we're looking at here, we haven't even gotten to the mobile application yet. We've got a couple of questions in the chat box asking if, if, if this can be done from mobile. Um, what we're setting up here is your back office master template for the clean. This is something that you do when you first get access to Task Manager. You're going to tell the system exactly how you want the clean to be done, and we build that template. And then what we do, um, I'm not going to go through this on this demo because uh, it's a standard part of the system. But in the same place, in the quick setup where you go to tell the software that you want to force a clean on each home, you just tell it which clean template you want to use on each of those homes. Um, and we'll share specific documentation and instructions on that as well. Quick question. Oh. If you do a change in your checklist, does it automatically update in, uh, in, in Task Manager? So if you do it here, how quickly does it update in the actual software? It's immediate, provided that the job hasn't been started yet. So if, uh, if I have a, you know, a two hour window in which a clean is being completed at a property, at the point where the cleaner selects to begin that job, um, if you change the template in Cyrus, because they've already started the job, the template won't change, because that's going to throw out the order of the way that they're doing things. So um, the answer is yes, it will update in real time, uh, but only for jobs that haven't been started yet. Good question. That's awesome. OK, cool. Yeah, great question. Um, if we have time, because um, I want to get into the app, if we have time, we'll circle back and I'll just show you guys, um, once you've made a template, how that works in terms of applying it to a home. Um, when you do the training for this upon launch, you're going to see exactly how to do that. So um, I don't want to go too far down that path until after we've looked at the app, because that's where it gets really, really fun. So the app is going to be a reflection of your housekeeping schedule. So in Cyrus, under your management company dropdown, you have a housekeeping schedule that you all are probably very familiar with. I'm just going to expand my date range a little bit here. All right, so here are my cleans. I've got several different cleaners uh, who are initiating cleans at different dates and different properties. Um, in the table, the master table that you guys have in Cyrus, you're able to see 
the cleaner, the date of the clean, the template that's being used on that clean, and so on. Uh, the templates, of course, correspond to what we just made in the uh, clean template area of the task manager. Every individual housekeeper in Cyrus has their own login to the task manager. So redirect your attention to the cell phone sized screen over here. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And again, remember, task manager is multilingual, so they can select between English, Spanish, and Portuguese before logging on. They can also change language once they are in the system as well. So once in our mobile application, a um, couple of different things. I'll just touch on the navigation before I, I walk through the whole application. So at any given time, you can hit the navigation, pop in here and view uh, your completed task history, change the language, or sign out as a different user. Bear in mind that the user is only going to see the specific cleans and the specific maintenance or inspections that have been assigned to them. So this isn't a free-for-all system. I only see what belongs to me as a cleaner or a maintenance person in this portal. So this is called My Tasks. In My Tasks, you have a view of each of your pending and in-progress housekeeping jobs, when they're scheduled for, which home they're for, whether or not it's back-to-back, -back, and so on. So I have three different uh, housekeeping tasks open here. I have two that are in progress and one that's still pending. Now, if you wanted to filter down the view a little bit uh, as a housekeeper and see some different types of job, um, if I have, um, if I'm a, a person wearing multiple hats, so I have cleaning tasks, I have maintenance tasks, I have inspections in my system, um, I'll have different options on here I can click. I only have housekeeping in my account, so I only have the housekeeping on or off, but you can filter it down to show you just the different types of jobs you want to focus on and have it filter out to show you specifically the back-to-back -back cleans and have it filtered down to a specific date range. By default, you'll get a full eight-week range of jobs. So you can be as, uh, as, as, as specific or as show me everything as you like. Let's get Essentially, into... your housekeeping staff could use this to see what cleans they have scheduled and where they are. Yeah, ex exactly. This is, this is just a broad schedule for the housekeeping staff. And I'm not having to send them lists of where they're going to next for the next exactly. series. You want to okay. you want to build a best practice into your operations that they live in this application. If you're if you're cleaning for me, this is your application. Uh, this is where you check your schedule on a, on a daily basis and so on. Uh, you can use I won't go too deep on this part for today's demo, but you can use the CRM to send the default cleaner a uh, text or an email uh, based on when a clean is due in a home. But uh, for all intents and purposes, we did have a question about this in the chat box. For all intents and purposes, this is a um, a living system for the housekeeping and maintenance staff. Um, if you have specific questions about how this applies to your operation, um, you know, if you have uh, subcontractors and that kind of thing, uh, we can suggest some workflows for that and we'll, we'll walk you through how to set up a, a good notification and exchange system for anybody who's third party. Okay. Okay. Hey guys, just a quick note if you do have questions on the application as Josh is doing this demo, please feel free to put it into the uh, question section into the chat box. I will get to them, uh, hopefully, if not during, after, and if not, we'll respond to your questions after the webinar. I'm kind of referring to the questions in real time and just kind of trying to build them into <laughs> the demo. So if I don't call you out by name, don't take it personally. I just, uh, this is a, a very difficult module to, to condense into a 20 minute demo. So I just wanna be respectful of everybody's questions. If we don't get to your question, um, we'll put the answer on the landing page after the webinar, or we'll shoot you a quick email after the fact. Um, again, we've got another follow-up question about the um, the language translation. So uh, again, yeah, bear in mind, they can translate this, uh, the interface itself into uh, Spanish, Portuguese, or English. Anything that you guys freely typed into the system will be automatically Google translated. Because of course, uh, if only we had the bandwidth to go and, uh, and translate all of everyone's written notes, right? But um, everything else is professionally natively translated if it's from the system interface. That's a good question from Luke. So let's look at um, an actual clean itself. So I have a clean on June 15th in property Dolphin Way. So I'm gonna open this up. Um, the first thing I get is my details tab. So the details tab is where uh, information about the actual property itself tends to live. Um, on the task screen itself, again, I get the address and a link to my Google Maps. So if I'm on Android and I click this, it just automatically GPSs me to the home uh, through Google Maps. Or if you're, on, if you're on Apple, it'll do it through Apple Maps or whatever your default map app is. Um, one of the first things that the cleaner should look at is the property details, because this is where it confirms the address, gives them the alarm code, the lockbox code, 
um, information about the incoming guests, such as you know check-in time, pool heat, that kind of thing, uh, lives in the property details tab. Um, so that's an important piece. Um, I'm going to come back to this in a few minutes when we talk about reporting issues and so on. What I want to focus on is the actual completion of the questions and requirements on this task. So you'll see that under the tasks breakdown here, I have zero out of 31 accomplished. This breaks down into the same sections that exist on the template that we set up for this clean in Cyrus. So I have my standard departure clean template here. In a real life case, this property Dolphin Way may have its own cleaning template. This is a beautiful property, lots of rooms, lots of specifics uh, within it. So it may have its own specific template, Dolphin Way Clean, for example, in which case you'll see the name of that home's cleaning template here. Uh, so when the housekeeper is ready to begin, in order to start interfacing with the clean, they're gonna hit start task. What that does is send a pop-up to your Cyrus account to let you know that the clean is now underway and the housekeeper is able to dig into each of these sections and start completing their tasks. I mentioned that one of the options to uh, interface the sanitary requirements into the clean is to add a dedicated section for sanitary at the beginning. So I pop in here and it's now gonna break down all the checklist items and all of the requests that we pose for them in the template. So if they're on their cell phone and they're being asked to upload a photo of themselves in full PPE and they click add photo, I'm not gonna do it on my laptop because it won't really reflect what it looks like on a cell phone, but they'll be able to upload directly from their cell phone's camera roll. So they'll take a selfie or take a photo in a mirror, um, or if this is a different item, like take a photo of the towels ornately arranged on a bed, they'll be able to upload a photo of that, for example, or add any custom written notes to this, which go on to the task report at the end. Um, there's various different types of questions and requirements like we talked about. So for example, this is a checklist. So we have uh, five or six here, different requests about wiping down surfaces and how to complete that process. So once that's done, the task manager hits complete. You'll see here there is a requirement for a photo upload. So when a photo is required, it's going to be bolded and underlined like this. And you'll see that the little orange dot at the top of each task, orange means it's not complete. So even though I've ticked yes to say I'm done with this checklist task, the actual object itself is still orange and incomplete. And it will remain that way until I upload the required photo. The housekeeper is able to pop in and out of the different rooms as they see fit. So I can come out of sanitary measures and pop into the master bedroom, for example. So now I've got my requirements in the master bedroom. Uh, we've got a photo upload request here. We have a checklist here. Um, now we've got the rate the condition out of five and so on. It breaks down further into the different items that I posed. You know, we posed a king bed. We posed a sanitary requirement in this room. So these all break down into different subsections within that master bedroom. I will repeat, this is a very granular example. So don't be intimidated by the level of detail. I just went very, very granular to show you guys the flexibility and power of the system. So um, sorry, yep. Brian, go ahead with your question. Yeah, you know what's important is, uh, again, everything is date stamped and time stamped. So as they complete each one of these tasks, you have full record of when they did it. So if, for example, a guest comes into the house and they say, well, the bed wasn't made, you can come back and say, well, the bed was completed at such and such a time, and here's an image of the bed complete. So it, it really does create a, a backup system for you guys internally. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Josh. No, no problem at all. I want to just touch on a couple of topical questions that we've had. Uh, I keep using the phrase app. Um, this can actually be accessed several different ways. So um, what you can do to just make it as easy as possible for your housekeepers and maintenance people to access Task Manager is just, um, and again, I don't recommend going there now because they'll probably be locked out of it, but we have an online uh, URL that they can use and it basically replicates an app within their web browser. So it's an app-like experience without having to download anything. And you can trust us from experience. It's very, very difficult to get people to download apps. Um, that's a 12-year uphill battle that we've had. So um, you definitely want people using web browsers uh, and it interfaces, as you can see, this looks and feels exactly like a mobile application in the web browser. Um, when we release the documentation for this upon launch, you'll be able to see that you can also save the web page as an app for Android and iPhone. Um, so they can access it as an app as well, um, but it is not going to be public, I believe, in the app store. Um, they've actually got a view it in the web browser first and then save it as an app. It's super simple to do. Um, we just try and pose as few barriers to enter as possible. 
and like I said, through experience, getting folks to download stuff through the App Store, it's just it's really bad for uptake. So uh, web is the way to go because you can just text and email a link and they're in. Um, so good questions, guys. We had a lot of questions on that. Um, there's a couple of account-specific questions as well that we'll respond to directly um, before we move on. So keep the questions coming. Like I said, I'm going to incorporate them if I can. If they're more specific and direct, we'll reach out to you directly. Now, Cleaner is going to go through, or the maintenance person is going to go through and you know tick off all of these requirements and meet the needs that have been specified by you in that template. Once they're done, they can simply just click Finish Task. It's not going to let me do that because I haven't met my 31 requirements. But once they've met the requirements and they've hit Finish Task, uh, they're off and they've marked it as done. And that sends you an update in your Cyrus account. Now. What happens if a housekeeper on site experiences a fatal issue in the home? You know, I say fatal issue is a very dramatic phrase, but if they have a, a major bit of damage, right? If something's broken or there's a massive carpet stain, they're going to use the issue report feature. So if I click into the task at hand and click issues, I can go ahead and report an issue. So we actually have here master bedroom uh, carpet stain. If I can type, mm -hmm. carpet stain, uh, we'll just say, you know, soda stain to the left of the bed. Uh, and we hit report issue and save. That's now going to send an, an update to the Cyrus account, letting you know that you have an issue reported on property. So let's depart from the app real quick. And I'll just show you how easy it is to create new work orders and requests based off of that issue. So if you pop down to under the task manager section in Cyrus, Again, this won't be public to you guys until we launch. And we'll talk about launch in just a few moments. If you pop into your reported issues, I'll be able to see here within my date range all of the on-site issues that have been reported to me by the housekeeping staff or the maintenance staff who are on a job. Um, so here's, for example, my carpet stain that was just added. So I click on view more details. This is going to give me a pop-up that shows me. So this was originated by a, a housekeeping. It's going to show me the housekeeping that originated it and any comments about the carpet stain. I can immediately go to issue actions and flip this into a new inspection, a new housekeeping, a new work order, or a new advanced work order. So if I need to deploy a deep clean, go ahead, Brian. This is the difference between a third party app and Absolutely. a native app to your system. This is exactly what I was mentioning earlier. For you to be able to make your two systems talk with a with a third party app, in most most instances, as far as I'm aware, there isn't an application that would be able to do that uh, and talk directly back into your software. So, this yeah. part of it is priceless. Yeah. Well said. Um, super simple. So just issue actions, add a new housekeeping. It's as simple as just specifying when the follow up clean will take place, which cleaner is going to do it. And then we specify the type of clean, whether it's a, you know, you may have different custom clean types in Cyrus, but most importantly is the template. Um, if you want to have a whole new task template assigned, if you have a standard task template for a carpet deep clean, for example, that can be added here. Um, bear in mind, this is phase one of task manager. Um, I never like using the phrase rush, but uh, we did accelerate the launch of task manager in light of uh, updated restrictions for vacation rental reopening. We're going to be proposing a phase two with our development team, which is going to include things like photo uploads for issue reports, um, a little bit more interfacing and uh, additional communication steps within the app uh, just to bring it to a, a different level. Now, bear in mind, if you guys have leadership on your housekeeping team uh, who they're not boots on the ground cleaners, but they do oftentimes get called out on site and they need to access the issue reports and they need to access the management company's detailed housekeeping schedule on the go. Um, you should absolutely be using Cyrus One for that. Again, Cyrus One is completely mobile responsive. So if they need to access these detailed management level screens on the go, which are not available in the cleaners task manager app, they can just go to one.cyrus.com in their browser and all of this management suite is available to them in a mobile app-like environment. So um, anything that on phase one isn't available for your management team in the task manager app, they should absolutely be using Cyrus One in the field to accomplish those goals, okay? Now, 
Um, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. And I mentioned at the top of the call, this is a, a really detailed new suite of features for the software. We didn't really get to, uh, to, to everything. There's a lot of nitty gritty behind the scenes, which is something I'm really excited about. I like getting into the details, but um, what we're going to do just to make sure that um, I don't go too, you know, guys know what I'm like. I get all over the place. So what I want to do is just kind of um, take a step back. And Brian, I'd love to give you the opportunity from a property management company's perspective before I jump into any other modules. We will give you guys some follow-up materials to read upon, and we'll talk about the launch dates and so on in just a few minutes. But Brian, just from a, a property management company's perspective, we've touched on this a little bit throughout the session, but I just kind of wanted to give you the opportunity to reach at the table one more time and just tell our management companies on the call, if this is new to them, if, if they haven't really used any in-depth housekeeping and operations software beyond our legacy service logon feature, kind of what mindset do they need to be in and just set the table a little bit from an operational uh, brainstorming standpoint. Um, where do you start? What do you need to get ready? Yeah, I mean, I wish you guys would have developed this one. I was a property manager with you guys. <laughs> Let's begin it. there. Uh, really it would have saved me an enormous amount of time being able to report people coming through ceilings and stuff like that. So, <laughs> um, no, it's a uh, it's an incredible piece of software. Uh, this is, you know, it's it's new software. A lot of people are exploring different types of technologies to be able to do a lot of the functionality that you guys are doing. Um, take a step back, and we know that this is going to require a little bit of time to set up, but the, the time that you guys are going to put into a software like this is going to be a huge time saver for you in the future, and it's going to save you guys a fortune. Um, yeah. When you start to set up this process, there are a number uh, of items that you're going to find that works on a global level. So where I would start is I would go down to the basics and I'd identify what those topics are. And it could be things like, how do you mop your floors? Where do you start? Do you, ex do you expect them to clean things like baseboards every time or your fans? And then that becomes your base template uh, to set up for all your properties. You can then take those base templates and then start to apply it to each one of your units, knowing the different intricacies that you guys have. Um, if you start super, super light, don't overcomplicate it, you'll have something to go to market with really, really quick. It's something that your your uh, your staff will, they'll, they'll understand it, uh, they'll take it on much easier. If you guys try to launch with something that's super, super complicated, you're also gonna overwhelm your staff. Um, so just uh, what I would do is the same way we develop software and we think about product, take it uh, from a, a light, uh, a lighter level, and then start to add functionality on top of that. Um, just give the opportunity to your staff members to adjust and get accustomed to the actual software itself and the power that it has. So yeah. that's my two cents on it. That's where I would start, and that's how I would uh, basically try to implement it inside of my inside yeah. of my company. And you guys are the property managers, right? You don't need us to tell you how detailed and and, and the kind of dialogue you should be having with on-site staff. Um, you know, these are individual human beings who, um, obviously, it goes without saying, um, you guys have a lot on your plate from a health and safety standpoint, from an HR standpoint, getting cleaners back into vacation rental homes. Um, really, I think just setting the table and letting folks know that, look, we've got technology to help you guys with this. We don't want you going into uncertain situations. We don't want you doing anything but what we've asked you to do. And you know these folks, so it's your prerogative how you know how you want to line out the instructions and how you want to present things to them. But I do think that um, as part of your rollout plan, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about rollout in just a minute. As part of your company's rollout plan, just think a little bit about how it is going to affect the housekeeping staff and how you want to present it to them as a value proposition as they return to work. In the same way you present it as a value proposition to guests and to homeowners. Heck, I mean, I wanted to talk a lot about that today. I know we're out of time, but yeah. we barely touched on kind of the, 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 the branding and the marketing implications that this has for you guys. Um, if you go back to a homeowner and you say, I've got you know, for every individual home, I have an SOP for making sure that every guest experience is absolutely pristine and issues are handled in a snap and you don't, you don't get bothered because we're handling it. Again, from a, a, a guest experience and in your descriptions, we had Verbo on last week telling us, hey, management companies, you need to be 
putting in your descriptions exactly what cleanliness and sanitary measures you're taking. Are you signed on to the Safe Home Initiative and things like that um, that you can brag about? Are you using a technology like Task Manager that you can brag about to prove how clean and well looked after the homes are? Um, I'd love to do a, a deeper dive on that if we, if we had the time, but um, maybe we'll do a, we'll do a part two, Brian. But there's a whole can of worms about using a technology like this and, and boosting these uh, aspects of the operation that is so important to the business. It is. It's really important. Uh, and, you know, guys, as we start to work with some of our, OT, our OTA partners, each one of them have requirements as well. So we're working on um, we're, we're working with those guys to be able to put those lists together and make them available through Task Manager for you guys to simplify yeah. where you're supposed to find all of this information. How do you use it? How do you use it? You know, if you know that you have an Airbnb customer coming in, what are the requirements for Airbnb and how do you translate that to your to your staff. So we're, we're thinking about those processes. We're trying to figure out how to do it across the board. Um, there's a lot going on. We realize that. So we're going to help you guys simplify some of those processes for you. So the question that uh, we've gotten 53,000 times in the chat box is the question of the hour. It's the million dollar question, uh, which is when? When can I access Task Manager? Um, you guys know that the uh, last thing we want to do is drop a technology bomb on you all and, and, and have you stranded to figure it out. So um, what we're actually doing uh, today is our final training session uh, with our internal staff. Uh, it's super important that when we release this, you guys have the help that you need uh, if you come across questions. So we have prepared tutorials for you and we have prepared documentation and videos and that kind of thing. Uh, but training our staff is kind of the last step on this end. So. We'll be, we'll be doing that today and making sure everyone's prepared to answer your questions when the product launches. Um, and then on Monday, uh, if, ev if everything is okay and settled internally, we'll be announcing the uh, the launch of the application. So uh, keep apprised for a news update on Monday uh, where we confirm the launch date. And when it's available, like I said, everything is web-based. So you guys don't have to download anything. You'll just be able to go into the Cyrus web app and the task manager feature will be available to you. Uh, and or you go into your direct your housekeepers to the task manager app I recommend you check it out first online. It's just a URL that we'll share with you guys on launch. Um, so it's a super simple process. You just click and go, uh, start reading the instructions and building your templates. Uh, we'll be available to help just as we are in any other support case. Um, so Monday, keep an eye out. We'll, we'll give you a pop-up in the software and we'll send you an email as well uh, so that you can be apprised of everything new. That's awesome news. So as of next week, hopefully you guys will have some uh, new software at your fingertips, it's really going to help you, uh, especially through these times. So it's a uh, it's a good time to release this. It's uh, in hindsight, you know, you guys put this together in the last year, so good planning. Yeah, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, we've got a lot more that we want to do with this. I mean, we're we're proud of it. Um, it doesn't really matter if we're proud of it. What matters is that it serves your needs, and we think that it it is the uh, it's the right tool for the right time. Uh, but we crave feedback as always. So. Uh, let us know kind of um, anything that you think we can do that would help make it more efficient and would um, make sure it's embedded and integrated as deeply into your operations as possible. Uh, you can send us that feedback to the help desk. Uh, as always, you know, support.cyrus.com is the place to go to submit uh, any help requests or any feedback that you have about the platform. Um, and as always, I just want to let you guys know you can be using webinars.cyrus.com. Um, we'll be updating that later on this afternoon, so you can RSVP to next week's webinar. Uh, every week, help, uh, excuse me, every week, webinars.cyrus.com is where you can go to sign up for every Friday's live webcast, and it's also where you can go to view recordings of all the past sessions that we've had. It has been a really, really productive last few weeks. Uh, we had that blockbuster session with Verbo that I mentioned earlier. We announced the rollout of uh, guest messaging via text in the CRM. Uh, we've had professionals on from all around the industry talking revenue management, channel management, best practices for guest service, and so on, uh, especially in the context of housekeeping. So if you haven't yet been to webinars.cyrus.com, all of those recordings and uh, FAQs are available for you from past webinars. Go ahead and check that out. Um, and with all of that said, I think um, we've got a lot of specific questions that we didn't get to, and I apologize, guys. Uh, I, I knew that we'd have that problem on this webinar. Um, you'll hear from us later today, either directly or with an FAQ page uh, that breaks down all the questions that we didn't get to. Um, I tried to incorporate as many as possible, but uh, it's, it's very difficult to keep it to a tight hour and get to all the questions. So um, you guys, as always, have been a great interactive audience, and we, we thank you for that. So look out for more information later on today. But before we sign off, 
Brian, do you have any last words of advice or, or, or feedback for our, uh, our management companies? Yeah, it's, you know, I think I say this on every webinar, guys, but we do have an enormous amount of resources available to you guys. Uh, we did set up the landing page, so not just for the webinars, but we have extended uh, pages for different types of resources, whether you're trying to get on, onto an OTA and you need help, you can access help from there, uh, down to questions on, you know, how to set up things like emails, communications. Uh, we did put those resources together for you guys, so please take a look at it. If you have suggestions, um, you know, kick them back to us and, and we'll take a look and we'll build stuff out for you. Um, these tools are, are really exciting. We have a lot in the pipeline for you uh, in development, uh, not just Task Manager, but Cyrus is taking a look at um, you know, how to continue to, to evolve the software for you and make you guys successful. Lastly, if you guys need help with reservations, uh, you have questions on things that the counties are doing, reach out to our team. Um, if, if you're not sure what to do uh, and you're overwhelmed, reach out to our team, and I'm going to continue to say it. We are here for you guys. Uh, we're here as a resource. So uh, our team's ready, and, and we want to hear from you. We want to make sure that you guys come out of this successfully. So do it. Yeah, well said. Um, you know, if, if you guys are coming out of uh, or we're going into really kind of the main workload of the pandemic recovery now from the management company's perspective, if you don't feel like you're quite prepared to take an onslaught of guests and start you know, uh, navigating through all of the new nuances and, and making sure that guests feel safe coming into the homes and so on. Um, our managed distribution program is actually taking all of that off of your plate. So um, we've, I think we've worked with almost a thousand new homes since the beginning of the pandemic have been loaded onto that platform. Um, and we're basically working with each one of those to understand every nuance, make sure you guys can get it successfully booked and interacting with the guests on your behalf. Uh, to make that a seamless process. So uh, if you're looking for a little bit of extra help on that side, I would love it if you can reach out to us and just even if it's just for a little bit of advice, uh, we can at least touch base and make sure that you guys have all the best practices that you need. We do want to make sure that you guys understand with the amount of requests that were asked, asked to come onto the, the new platform, there is a little bit of a backlog. So I'd encourage you guys to do it as soon as possible uh, so we can get you onto the software as fast as possible. Don't wait to do it. Um, so if you're thinking about it, come talk to us, call me directly or call Jared or Josh or one of our sales team. They, they can walk you through what the platform does, how we how we connect to the OTAs um, and how we can get you guys live and, and successful in the short amount of period of time as possible. So, yep. Uh, we'll Josh. put as always. The details will be on the landing page, guys. We, we love it when you reach out to us. So uh, there's one central email address that you can use for everything uh, related to the webinars. So that's communications at cyrus.com. Uh, you guys normally use the help desk for technical and for training. But if you have suggestions for the webinar or if you have general business level requests or you need help with reservations and you want to look at the managed distribution program we were just talking about, anything like that, you can just hit communications at cyrus.com. That comes to me. Uh, and I'll work with our business development team and our operational VPs to make sure you guys get help on that front. And then as always, anything technical, you guys know where to go. It's support.cyrus.com. And we have uh, a team there who is uh, raring to help you out. So interact with us. As Brian said, we are a resource. So um, all that in mind, I think we're just about ready to sign off. Uh, this has been a, a great session. I'm glad to show you guys the new platform in uh, kind of a skim coat detail. But uh, when we do the launch next week, you're going to get a deep, deep, deep dive documentation so you can really immerse yourselves in everything that it does and, and get started. So um, I hope you enjoyed the sneak peek and I hope you're looking forward to the full on launch next week because I know that we are. As always, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Brian, uh, for being uh, an excellent, excellent host uh, with me today. We'll be back Thanks, next Josh. week with a focus on channel management. So look out for an email from us and make sure you RSVP for next Friday. Thank you guys and thank you, Brian. Thanks guys, have a good, uh, good weekend. Goodbye everybody. <laughs>